Hey there! I'm here again on Bob Show's channel and my own to review the Land Before Time sequels. I've already referenced the Land Before Time here in my little Panda Fighter review. I'm a big fan of the original Land Before Time movie, and I regard it as an animated classic and one of Don Bluth's best, if not his number one best. I'll even go and say that I like this film more than any Disney or Pixar film. I also think it's on par with many animated films like Spirited Away, The Iron Giant, and The Prince of Egypt. But, sadly, I'm not here to talk about The Land Before Time or those other three animated films. I'm here to talk about Land Before Time, 5, The Mysterious Island, and 6, The Secret of Saurus Rock. First bit of background. I did grow up with the first few Land Before Time sequels, including these own. But I'm not going to review the first three sequels, including The Great Valley Adventure, The Time of Great Giving, and The Journey Through the Mists. Here's why. I did watch those three sequels. And honestly, they're not that bad. Now, are they close to the original? No. But they're fine on their own. The second one for me is probably a 7 out of 10, and so is the third one. And the fourth, Journey Through the Mists, I'd probably give, I don't know, a... 6.5 out of 10, I guess. Even though that's nowhere near the original, which is, for me, one of the few animated films I can give a 10 out of 10. But, regardless of that, let's watch The Land Before Time 5 and see how it holds up. So as this movie opens up in the Universal logo that I've seen before, it goes on to... Whoa, what the heck? We're opening in the beginning of the universe for some reason. This is weird. So hard to believe there's five of these already. Come on, this is taking forever. Just oh, there we go. Wait, what? And it's going, it's going any hour now. Yeah. Millions of years ago, the Earth was a very different place. The great land masses were ever moving and shifting. Okay, all right. You are giving us the same narration and opening, only starting in the beginning of the universe this time, of all the past movies, including the first one. I'm going to do you a favor and skip it. In fact, remember this classic commercial here from the 80s? Well, how about I play this commercial every time something I want to skip comes up? Ready? Here we go. Skip it, skip it. Come on, everybody, skip it! But in one wonderful place, dinosaurs of many kinds had learned to live together in harmony. The Great Valley, where there was plenty of food for all, and peace reigned supreme. And so did boredom, as you can see here with Littlefoot and his friends. Well, looks like there's only one tree star on the tree. Yep, yep, yep. The big question is, who gets it? What do you mean? It's my turn to get the first tree star of the day. It may be the first one of the day, but it's the last one on the tree. That changes the rules. Uh-uh. I think it should go to, say, the oldest. But that's you. I know. I think it should go to the littler. Damn, these voices are off. And I'm not just talking about Ducky here. Fair's fair. The tree star's mine. Shut up, Littlefoot. Right, Spike? Ah. Nice try, Spike, but Petrie get three star first. Oh, all 
of a sudden me not feel so hungry. Tickle, you're riding on top of Sarah. Oh, whatever. Oof. Thanks for wasting our time, movie. You're not off to a good start. So in order to advance up the plot, a whole bunch of locusts come to destroy the Great Valley, I guess. But this scene goes on forever. Swarm what? circle rose today the great valley was a paradise and now the great night circle looks down on a wasteland I'm afraid it could be a long time before there's enough green food in our beloved valley to sustain us much as I hate to agree with a long neck I must admit that he's right there's nothing left to eat Oh my terrible goodness. situation. What are we to do? Keep your voices down, please. The children are sleeping. We're faced with a difficult decision, but one I think we'll all agree is necessary. We must leave the Great Valley. Where would we go? Leave the Great Valley? Impossible! We are protected here. Beyond the mountain walls live Sharp Teeth! Get hold of yourselves! Show some backbone! My friends, we have lived in our valley so long that we forget. All of us survived in the outside world before coming here. And we can do it again, if we must. We can't leave the Great Valley. Where would we go? Where would we live? Probably join herds of our own kind somewhere. I do not like this grown-up idea. Petri, no go. They can't make me. I don't want to live with a bunch of three horns. They're too bossy. Where would I ever find friends like you? Then we're all agreed. At first light, we leave the Great Valley. Together. Together! Okay, Petrie, go. No. But first, Petrie need help? You're stupid. <laughs> let's, let's just get that out the way. Yeah, Steve Harvey there just shared my opinion. Petrie... You're an idiot. But, regardless of that, let's move on with the plot. Littlefoot and Co. And each day travel for a hungry, very long time. Thirstier. This is really getting more.
Littlefoot, Sarah, Spike, Petrie, and Ducky split away and make it into the ocean here, realize it's undrinkable, and then find this mysterious island. Roll credits. It's a lot farther away than it looks. This is like waiting for your hatch day. It never seems to get any closer. So while they are on their way to the island, the frame starts changing to really odd colors. And honestly, I have no idea what's happening here. It looks like a tidal wave, but it's never explained. Is it a storm? Is it a earthquake? Is it a tsunami? Is it a freak wave? I don't know. Uh. What is all this stuff? Doesn't look like any green food I've ever seen. It smells icky. Look funny. Tastes sort of strange. So after this tasting scene, this happens. The land path, it's gone. What were you saying about our folks finding us? And as a matter of fact, they are finding you. Or at least, what's left of you. Poor little foot. This is all your fault, Longneck. My daughter is gone, and I blame that boy of yours. Little foot? Why? Well, because... Uh, because I have to blame somebody, don't I? We mustn't lose hope. The moving waters feel cool to the feet after such a long journey. The children must have stayed in the shallow water and walked on, looking for something to eat. Grandma is right. We must keep looking. Here comes the pointless, forgettable, difficult to listen to and sing to songs in this movie. Skip it, skip it. Come on, everybody, skip it. So then they go on a boat and then they detect a Cretoxy rhino shark, as you can see here. Swimming shark tooth! <laughs> to where we started. Well, at least we're safe from the swimming sharp tooth. The following day, they're running from, guess what, a sharp tooth. But here's the good news. It's a familiar face. <laughs> Little foot? Chomper? Yep. It's me, Chomper! I wasn't scared, you know. I know. Me not see you since you just barely hatched. And now I'm all grown up. Yep, Chomper from movie number two, The Great Valley Adventure, is back. And honestly, he's the only really good thing about this movie. And the only reason, I think, people like this movie. Oh no, Chomper has parents, and they don't approve of him being near the herbivores. Yeah, nice ambient lion roar noises. Coming from someone who has seen lions in the wild, it gets really obvious that you're using modern animal noises here. You might as well give Chomper some bear cub noises. I didn't mean it, movie! So in a later scene, as they're sharing tree stars, Littlefoot talks to Chomper and then heads back and... That tree 
Tony Star's gone, I'm gonna be really mad. <gasps> oh no! That's right, you better be scared. Because if somebody ate it, I'm gonna... Wow, Littlefoot. For what's supposed to be the hero of this movie, you're kind of a dick. And not the fun kind of dick, you're just a dick. True story here, I used to see Littlefoot as a hero, back when I grew up with this movie, and the others. Littlefoot, you're not very nice. Here comes the main conflict of this movie, a Giganotosaurus, aka one of my favorite dinosaurs. And he's an idiot. I'm going to wrap this movie up and head to new movie number six. Hopefully it's better. Chomper's parents defeat the Giganotosaurus. It falls with Chomper and Littlefoot. The Giganotosaurus is dragged by the current, even though they're completely unaffected. And then Chomper and Littlefoot, and also the others, are saved by... Oh no, it's a swimming shark tooth. Just kidding. It's actually an Elasmosaurus named Elsie, who takes them back to their families. As you can see here. And they head back to the Great Valley, which inexplicably and very quickly heals. No problem. The end. So like I said earlier, on to movie number six, The Secret of Saurus Rock. Okay, that title's done. Even from the title, you're not off to a good start. The movie begins just like the fifth one did, in space, with the beginning of life again. Which of the stories are really true, Grandpa? <laughs> no one knows, Littlefoot. That is one of the great mysteries of life. No, it isn't. Shh. Littlefoot, please do not interrupt. Yeah, Petrie not like it when you erupt neither. <clears throat> As I was saying, after many crossings of the Bright Circle, great herds began to appear on the land. The long necks, the spike tails, the three horns. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Dana, Dana, Tweety Horny. Hush, you two, or Auntie Sarah's gonna be upset. Oh, no, not the twins. When I was young and I watched this movie, these twins annoyed me. And they still do. Oh, Auntie Sarah, well. <laughs> mm. All right, children. What happened then, Grandpa? Some of these herds, in their migrations across the land, found the most fertile, beautiful place in the world. The Great Valley! Yes, and life in the Great Valley was good. Until one day, the Sharp Tooth came. I'm so used to sharp teeth here that I really don't care. And not just any sharp tooth, but the biggest, meanest, most ferocious sharp tooth ever. But then, just when the long necks thought all was lost, the lone dinosaur appeared on the horizon. The who? The what? The lone dinosaur. But what is a lone... Shh! The battle seemed to last for hours. It was a spectacle no one had ever seen before. A lone leaf eater taking on a sharp tooth.
And just as suddenly as he had appeared, the lone dinosaur went away. Oh. That's it? He just leave? Nobody ever saw him again? Well, legend has it that not long after the defeat of the Sharptooth... Earthshake! So they called it Saurus Rock. And it's there to this very day. Sometimes, when the wind is just right and blows away the mists, you can see it. Watching over the Great Valley, just like the lone dinosaur did so many years ago. They say, if you look very closely, you can see the circle of teeth around its neck. Real teeth? The story goes that they came from the very sharp tooth the lone dinosaur defeated. <laughs> they say that some nights you can see the ghost of that sharp tooth wandering around looking for his teeth. <gasps> Well, I've never heard that part of the legend. But they do say that if anything ever happens to Saurus Rock, bad luck will descend upon the Great Valley. Well, well something about bad luck, I guess. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, I guess that's the top point of this movie. Listen. So Littlefoot gets inspired by this story and starts singing his own spin on this. <sighs> Long ago on a mountain top, a mighty egg was laid. Burned by the light of the circle bright and cooled by the forest shade. Then one stormy evening when the icy rain did pour, out of the egg appeared the leg of the lone dinosaur. was long and limber, his shoulders broad and lean. His eye was high as the morning sky, and his vision, it was keen. He wandered strong and silent across the valley floor, and everybody called him the Lone Dinosaur. Dinosaur! His tail was swift as lightning, dinosaur! That is dark, and that does not match the tone of this movie at all. Movie, if you're gonna try and be like the original, stay like the original, not make it all happy and then have some unborn dinosaurs die. Okay, sorry, that was a little overreacting. But seriously, what is wrong with you, movie? He tracked that pack of varmints and fucked them by the score. He left them lying toothless. <laughs> I'll give you the skip it song again. Skip it, skip it. Come on, everybody, skip it. Okay, I'm done with that joke. If another song comes up, I'm just gonna pass over it.
What? Sarah? Have you seen them? Are they here? Please say they're here. Huh? Who? The twins! No, they're not here. Oh no! They've disappeared! I will have to say one other problem with these later sequels. The scenes that should take a minute or two go on so much longer. Or at least they feel like they go on a lot longer. You'll see here when Sarah and the others are searching for the twins. by the bubbling goo. They pushed me in. I got mad. I told them to get lost. Huh? That right? She said that. Me heard her. Who knew they even knew what that means? Then what happened? Then you showed up and started talking about Doc and the lone dinosaur and what Saurus Rock must look like and... Oh, oh, they're done? They came up with this here? Oh yeah, Saurus Rock. Well, why did you have to take so long to do that? You could have cut to, I don't know, that last few tens of seconds of that clip. And then maybe... Ah, this movie. Oh, and one other thing. How did the twins climb up that? Well, it looks like they can climb it too, as our heroes seem to search for the twins. <laughs> They're even more annoying than I remember. These stupid twins. I really hope a sharp tooth comes along and actually advances the plot. Booyah, I was right. Yay! <laughs> Dumbest Allosaurus ever. Also, did the twins even notice it? I didn't hear any screaming. As they are tracking the twins down, this scene happens. Whoa! Not even Grandpa could reach those tree stars. My dad could. How? The three-horn way. He'd just knock it right over. One of these trees? I don't think so. Oh, yeah? Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Nice one. Me convinced. That sure didn't feel like a tree trunk. It no look like tree trunk either. And it does not sound like a tree trunk. No, no, no! You're stupid. 
Sorry for using that joke again. But I had to anyway. We're six movies in. You guys should recognize Sharp Teeth. <sighs> well, after this. <gasps> and there's the twins! Dinah, Dana! Thank goodness you're okay! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Comic relief? Really? After what appears to be, according to the opening story, what might bring some serious bad luck to the Great Valley? Really? Well, after this scene, there is a big Allosaurus chase with a, spoiler, shove the Allosaurus down a cliff, but I'm going to skip that because the series, honestly, is so full of the disposing sharp teeth Scenes that, honestly, I have a feeling that the herbivores are the bad guys, not the sharp tooth. Hey, we got the twins back. And your dad never even knew they ran away. Ran away? Uh, hi, Daddy. What did he mean, Sarah? Did the twins really run away? Well, uh, sort of. For a little while. But they didn't go far. I see Google. Sorry, Rocky. Far. They said they went to Saurus Rock. Saurus Rock? Sarah, it was your duty to watch the twins. And you failed. Yes, Daddy. I am very disappointed in you. Now you march yourself right home. Apparently, you still need to be watched yourself. Losing the twins. I never heard of such a thing. It's absurd. Me and my big mouth. Do not feel bad, little foot. It's not your fault, just bad luck. Just like your grandpa said it would be if anything happened to Saurus Rock. First we have bad luck, then the whole Great Valley will have bad luck, then maybe the whole dinosaur world will have bad luck, then maybe even the whole universe will have bad luck. Gosh, she's right. Bad luck. Boom. I was right. Also, one note, why the hell are you playing the dying mom music? And I know other reviewers, including Bob's show, address that, but this is a problem I need to address, too. This is wrong. Very wrong. So unfortunately, it looks like bad luck actually does come to the Great Valley with a ton of these storms and also a tornado. Movie, are you trying to kill off Littlefoot and Doc? Because I'm pretty sure getting that close proximity of a tornado, you would suffocate. Or get crushed by gale force winds, or get crushed by debris. <laughs> you should be dead. So Littlefoot goes looking for a sharp tooth to hopefully put back on Saurus Rock to make all the storms go away. And lo and behold... Better just pick one and get out of here. I don't know how long that stick will hold. That looks like a good one. It's stuck in there pretty tight. 
I can do this. Whew. Good thing there's a breeze in here. Wait a second. I'm inside a dead shark tooth. Why would there be a breeze? Unless it's breathing. But if it's breathing, then that means... It's Wait a minute, where'd this guy come from? I don't want to be a little dinosaur anymore! Doc? Grandpa! Run, little foot! Always. You sure do. I just hope Grandpa will be all right. Come on, Grandpa! Go! Yeah! yeah! Oh, he's doing okay. Until now. You sure have a habit of showing up at the right time. Still just lucky, I guess. It's a good thing sharp teeth aren't very smart. Sharp teeth are supposed to be more intelligent than the herbivores. They need strategy to take down herbivores, like you, Doc and Grandpa. Second, how did you get a teeth from there? Uh, seriously, how? Third, that was a really dumb climax for what's supposed to be the most exciting part of the movie. The time of bad luck's almost over. Just time I was going, kid. Yeah, but... This hurt life's not for me. Too much talking. Well, be seeing you, kid. Oh, okay, Doc. And thanks! Good luck, kid. You already got a hero, kid.
look, Grandpa? <laughs> it looks wonderful, Littlefoot. Now, maybe the time of bad luck will finally be over. Oh, Littlefoot, I told you. That was all just a bedtime story. There's no... I know, I know. There's no such thing as bad luck. But there's no harm in making sure. I suppose not. That's the message of the movie? Are you freaking kidding me? Ugh. No harm in making sure, huh? Littlefoot, don't read stories to kids like you are doing so often in this so often in these sequels. And with that in mind, I'm going to watch number 7, The Stone of Cold Fire. And I remember when I was younger that this was the one that discouraged me from watching the remainder of the sequels when I was really young, mind you. Probably eight years old. So let's see how good this movie is. Stone of Cold Fire. All right. All right, you come here with me. <sighs> I'm gonna try and stay calm when I say this. But I just watched The Stone of Cold Fire. And the big freeze, and you into the big water, and Great Long Night Migration, and the other four sequels. I'm going to review them as briefly as I can. Stone of Cold Fire, while having much better animation than the previous two, is really bad. A 4 out of 10. It does have a great villain, but man, why do you have to have aliens in this thing? Movie 8, The Big Freeze, is good, 6 out of 10. Turn to Big Water is garbage, 3 out of 10. The Great Long Migration is also garbage, 2 out of 10. Invasion of the Tiny Sauruses is a 2 out of 10, sucks. Great Day of Flyers is also bad, 2 out of 10. The Wisdom of Friends is the worst of the franchise, 1 out of 10. And Journey of the Brave, also bad, but a 4 out of 10. All in all, 5 and 6, while not great, or even that good, are not really that horrible now that I've seen 7 through 14. But, I will have to say, they're not really worth watching. But they're not worth hating over either. So, I'll give them both 5s out of 10. Pray for me. Now that I'm probably going to go insane after seeing all those sequels.
At first, Littlefoot could only think about his mother. He hardly noticed his hunger and forgot about the Great Valley and that he must somehow reach it.